Here we're going to have a look at uh, trig functions in the advanced level of autograph and in the advanced level you have the choice between degrees and radians. Uh, so here I have a picture of uh, y equals uh, sine x, cosine x, tan x and also y equals x and you'll notice that something quite interesting goes on near the origin. So to get this diagram together I'll just show you how it all works. So just do a right click, enter y equals sine x enter y equals cos x, enter y equals tan x, enter y equals x. So it's very straightforward. Um, now y equals x was the last one to be entered, so I just need to go back to one of the trig ones to press the red tick. So the red tick will not know about the trig if we just click it now. But if you click on one of those, you will indeed get that. Uh, so minus pi by 2 to 2 pi. And what you notice is that uh, y equals x and y equals sine x and y equals tan x become pretty indistinguishable near the origin, which of course is one of the important uh, features of radian measure. So let's zoom in at the beginning here at the origin and see how straight they indeed are. They really are indistinguishable. Now don't worry if you uh, lose it, you just need to do the red tick again and all gets recovered. Uh, what would happen if we press the degrees button? It's a good thing to discuss. Uh, if we change to degrees, what have we got here? Well, that's only about uh, uh, minus one or so degrees. This is about three degrees. So uh, sine x is going to be hardly started. So let's just see what happens. Y plus x stays put, of course. Cos x is, is only just beginning to drop its height. Um, sine x is just beginning to get off the ground and tan x likewise. However, if you press the red tick, uh, it's going to change to minus 90 to 360. So what's going to happen to y equals x? Is it going to go down here or is it going to go up here? Good thing to think about. So ready, steady, go. Yes, y equals x goes very steep because if this is only 2 on this scale, 2 is just beginning here. So, so clearly the relationship between y equals x and y equals sine x is a completely lost in degrees. So go back to radians, that looks a bit funny but it all sorts itself out there. Let's have a look at some of the trig formulae that uh, our students have to learn about. So we'll start off again I'm going to draw y equals sine x red tick. And I'm going to discuss uh, what does y equals sine squared x look like. So we could actually write y equals sine squared x Okay, so we're going to be squaring all the values. Well, uh, when the value is 0, it makes no difference at all. And when it's pi, it makes no difference at all. When it's 1, it stays the same as well. When it's minus 1, it becomes plus 1. So here for here, it's 0 again. And here it's 0. So what about all the other values? What happens when you square a value less than 1? It gets smaller. So that actually is 1 over root 2. If we square that, it goes down to a half. So there it is. And these are all values of a half. So, what's it actually look like? And that shouldn't be there, of course. That should be at plus 1. So we'll just rub that one out. So if you join these together, it looks like something which is going twice as fast. Now, in the earlier tutorial, we had a look at uh, what's meant by a double angle and as far as sine is concerned. But is it a sine? No, it has a maximum of the y, so it looks like a cosine, and it looks like uh, a cosine of 2x, but a minus cosine, because it's upside down, and it has a amplitude of a half. Okay, so I think we've got enough clues now. Let's enter y equals minus cos of 2x, Right, um, that's not quite right because we said it needed to have an amplitude of a half, so we'll double click on that and stick a half in there. That's better. Um, now it just needs to go up by a half, and I think we've done the job. So we'll stick a half in here. Uh, this is better done, of course, with the slow plot because you can really see it eating up those brown circles as it goes through. There it is, less than the sine x, but now it's equal to, and so on. Now there's no proof that uh, sine squared x is a half into 1 minus cos 2x, uh, but it certainly is a nice visualisation. The proof, of course, is done by algebra in the usual way. 
Then I thought uh, we'd have a look at fitting a sine wave to some data. So let's just make up some data now. I'm just going to put some data on the as a set of points. I use the pen, I think, for this. Okay, so let's supposing I'm making some data up that is going in this sort of pattern. So it looks fairly sinusoidal. It's quite difficult to set this up convincingly, but I think that's not too bad. All right, uh, and now I'm going to right click select all points and right click convert those to a data set. So they are now double click one object and this is what I've created. Now of course this could have easily come out of Excel and been put in like that. Alright, so um, I want a sine wave that's going to fit this and the most general sine wave you can think of is y equals a sine brackets b brackets x minus c close brackets close brackets plus d. Um, I don't like bx plus c for lots of reasons. b and c then become interdependent. Here the, these transformations are quite independent. b is the frequency, c is the translations left and right. a is the amplitude, d is up and down. They'll all take a value of 1 to start with, which I'm happy with, and uh, off we go. So let's fast forward that a bit. Um, now you could just select that and select this and ask it to fit to the data but I think from a teaching point of view it's really nice if you can get the constant controller out now and go through these constants one at a time and just make sure you understand how it all works. A is amplitude, B is frequency, actually the way I've done it frequency doesn't need a lot of work, uh, that's a bit of a shame, um, I'll just reduce the step a bit and bring it along a tiny bit. Uh, C is going to move it to the, as I increase C, it's going to move to the right, because it's X minus C, so up it goes. But again, um, I've rather foolishly made these a terribly good fit, but to get the idea. And then D, just up a bit, and I think we're just about there now. So let's see how the computer gives us an answer. Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to select that and use the text box, because it lists all the things. I don't think we need list all the values of the constants. OK, so we just select that and select this and right click best fit to data and uh, it'll just find the best fit by least squares all the way through. So it's, it's not a terribly sinusoidal data that I put in to start with, but um, that's quite a nice example of how you can use the constant controller to make sure you really do understand what all these constants mean and then use the computer just to polish it off in the final stages. OK.